number one Iron Age booty daddy. The Ohio train derailment disaster. <laughs> Where do I even start? This thing is insane. And there are so many different angles to come at this story from. So let's start with this. It happened on February 3rd, and it largely was not reported on or even being covered by a any mainstream sources until just recently, within the last few days. And in fact, it wasn't until the last few days when it started trending on Twitter. One of the things that really bothers me is when I found out that a reporter on the ground was actually arrested trying to cover the story. Supposedly, he was arrested, held in a gymnasium, and the charges that he was being arrested for were uh, uh, fel or what is it? felony trespassing. So a reporter on the ground the day that it was happening wanted to cover the story and they were taken off site and told not to cover it. Now, a lot of people, there is a lot, I mean, that man, the tinfoil hats are coming out right now and even my tinfoil hats on this one. But when you look into a lot of this information, there's, th this is hugely devastating. It's being, it's being called the, you know, the Chernobyl event. It, it is being uh, likened unto like that of Chernobyl. And how absolutely insane is that? Now, one of the other sides to this story is that not only did the reporter get arrested, but it seems that the White House was dodging questions about this, and the hmm, transportation secretary uh, does not seem to be or was at least seeming to treat this very flippantly. Now, hopefully with the media attention that it's getting, it's uh, treated um, to a higher extent in our government. The other side of this is uh, residents were told to go back to their house only days after this catastrophic event happened. We're seeing animals all over the affected area dying, getting sick. And one of the biggest concerns that I have in this entire situation is that with all of these chemicals flying up into the air because they decided to burn them. As somebody who's actually worked with hazardous chemicals in the past, lighting them on fire is never a good idea. Ever. Neutralizing agents should be used, and there are neutralizing agents out there. All you would have to do is get the cargo manifest and then go and get... Neutralizing agents are made for almost every hazardous chemical out there. Why? For instances like this. Now, it would have taken quite a bit to do it. But going into the farmland and the animals getting sick, what we're seeing from this event, that it was, now that we know that there seems to be, a, there seemed to have been a media silence on this for the last week, which is hugely concerning because now the public, at least throughout the wider U.S., was kept in the dark on this. Now, people in Ohio were probably very well aware of this, but it's, it's so crazy that even in the internet age, a story like this was kept quiet. This should have been the biggest thing on Twitter. In fact, if you look at some of the stories of the past year with many of our food production plants catching fire over and over and over again, this story seems to be as calamitous as those, but yet was kept in the dark. So it happens February 3rd, animals are getting sick and potential and, and fish are being found dead in the streams. And now we're finding out that, <sighs> sorry, there's so much to the story and it pisses me off so much. We're finding out that the citizens were told to go back to their homes, it's fine, it's safe. We're starting to see reports of nausea. We're starting to see reports of headaches, coughing fits. We're seeing that people in this area, the air itself is still contaminated. And from what I'm to understand, there is still a, 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 a burn happening with a lot of these chemicals. It's not done. It's not over. The event itself is still happening today. Now, a lot of people, there's a lot of place to blame, right? They say, oh, well, isn't this weird that, tr that the train derailments and... Train derailments are actually fairly common, so common they actually have machines to, you know, put them back on the rails. Trains are not uh, the most efficient way to uh, transport materials. We've known this for a very long time. So train derailments hauling hazardous chemicals like this are, uh, uh, th this, is, th this is bad, but I don't think that this uh, would lead to anything crazy. The biggest problem with all of this is that it's one more domino in the effect of what we have been seeing. 
Now this is where we put the tin foil hats on. Food processing plants, bird flus. We've started seeing chicken production fall. Chicken feed has been chicken feed has been noticed to uh, certain feeds are producing less eggs from chickens, and now people are having to alter the feeds that they're using. And now we're starting to see the chemicals that have been blown up into the atmosphere and falling back down to the planet are now most likely not only going to affect the health and well-being of all of the citizens, but the multi-billion dollar agricultural industry that is in Ohio. And if I did my research correctly, most of the farmland in Ohio is all privately owned. In fact, I believe very few, if any, corporate farms were actually disrupted in all of this. Now, if I'm wrong on that, please let me know. But this disaster in Ohio seems to be much bigger and is going to have not just long lasting effects on the people who were there, which this is going to affect them for the rest of their lives. This is going to affect their children. This is going to affect their water tables, their sources of food. It's also going to affect the food production in the US in private in in the hands of private owners. If the land gets too contaminated, you won't be able to grow crop or if you do grow crop, God forbid, it would be genetically altered by the chemicals and it would not be safe for human consumption. Soy, corn, cattle, chickens, turkeys, and many other things, soybeans, I should say, not soy, soybeans, and many other things are produced. In fact, they are, in fact, I believe soybeans are the largest thing produced in the farmland in Ohio. The bigger story with this disaster is not that the, the poor handling that the government had over this, that's regular, you know. Uh, the best thing that the government can do is screw up. That In fact, they screw up everything that they touch, so obviously they would botch this. Obviously, we remember the EPA disaster in Colorado when they released th thousands of gallons of chemical into uh, a river in Colorado years ago. I was actually there. I believe uh, I was there when it happened. And so we know things like this can happen, will happen. But what we didn't have back then was all of the dominoes that are falling over right now when it comes to our food supply. I wasn't sure how I was even going to talk about this. I wasn't sure how to talk about this. This is massive. Why was it covered up for a week? Why was a reporter arrested for trying to get in there and report on it. Why was this not one of the biggest stories for the public to know the day that it happened? And why are we being kept in the dark? Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for being a little bit more scatterbrained on this one than my normal videos, but well, I'm not an expert in everything, and this is huge. But the thing that bothers me the most is what's going to happen to our agricultural industry and our private agricultural industry from this. Let me know what you guys think down below. I love seeing your comments. I love reading your comments. And in fact, I dedicate a special live stream to everybody at 11 a.m. Central on Sundays. So if you guys comment down below, join me on Sunday mornings where we drink some coffee and we go over your comments and you guys get my reactions to those comments in real time. You can join the live chat as well. I have a fantastic community down there. So I hope to see you there. Let me know what you guys think about this. And I do hope that I was able to cover this in a way that made you think about the story a little bit differently because I'm not seeing anybody cover it from the agricultural side. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. And until next time, cheers, everybody.
Thank you all so much for checking out this video. Never forget, if you would like to be a part of my supporter live streams, head over to my Gilded or my Locals, links down in the description, and you guys can join me for those live streams every single Wednesday. But right now, I would love to say thank you to everybody who is supporting me. Over on Locals, we've got Little Andean, Sword Rush, Frequency Studios, Katie Francis, Kikomon, Iron Age Media. We also have... Over on the Gilded, JP, the Myriosphere Origin, Skunk's Workshop, and the Gold Tier. He is an Iron Age booty daddy. Trippy Soul, also another Iron Age booty daddy. Kiko Mon and Frequency Studios to round all of it up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here on the channel. And I will see you all in the supporter live streams.